Hey everyone, it's Steve and welcome back to Network Advisor. Let's talk about VMware. So VMware is a software application, runs on Windows, also can run on Mac, and it allows you to have another operating system run as an independent instance in a computing environment. Let me explain another way. Right now, I'm sharing with you my Windows 10 computer, but I just launched a copy of Windows 7. All right, so Windows 7 is running inside this window here, but I'm also actually using my Windows 10 environment to run this application. So what so what this can be really handy for is when you need to set up labs, try experiments, maybe you need other types of operating systems to test things, but you don't want to have to fire up a new copy of, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, a new hardware machine every time. Where can you get VMware? You can go to VMware.com and create an account. As far as I know, there's no requirements to create an account. And then you can go to the uh, downloads and you can look for VMware Workstation. Workstation Player, there we go. All right, so Workstation Player. And let's see here. And as far as I know, it should be free. This should, should, should still be free. All right, so I'm going to download Workstation for Windows. All right, oh, we got Linux version two, nice. All right, so I'm gonna download that. All right, so installing VMware players, not too complicated, but it does make some changes to your network environment. So you may want to not do this on some critical production machine. And you may want to re like do a practice run on some other machine and understand what it does before you uh, put it on something that's a lot more um, sensitive to changes in the network environment. What it does specifically is it creates special VMware network adapters. So it doesn't change your existing network adapters, but it adds network adapters. And that's the reason why I'm just encouraging a little bit of caution there. It's mostly a follow your nose thing, just next and defaults. All right, finish up. And of course, like most programs, you have to restart. So let's restart. And then what we'll do next is we will build a, uh, we'll build an Ubuntu instance in VMware. All right, we're back from the reboot. You can see my VMware workstation icon here. So when you first start it up, there's not going to be any virtual machines. Uh, there's a couple things you can do. One is you can either um, choose to get one that you download, like you can download pre-made virtual machines and just put them in your library. The other thing you can do is you can um, create them yourself. You just need the operating system installation disk. So I'm, for this example, I'm going to make a uh, Ubuntu uh, 20, version 20 uh, installation. So I'm gonna come here to create new virtual machine. And I put the drive, the disk in my drive there. So it's detected it. Sometimes if it doesn't know, it'll ask you, like it'll say what type of install, uh, operating system are you gonna install? And there'll be like a drop down menu there. And then you can see the directory where it's going to drop it. I actually don't want that. I want to create uh, on a drive where I've got a little more space. Let's go over here to D, make new folder, virtual machines, because these things get pretty big. So let me stop and make that a point. The reason I don't want this installed on my C drive is because my C drive is mostly just for my operating system and it's not very big. Um, the, the virtual machines can be anywhere from maybe as little as seven or eight gig up to you know, 100 gig, depending on how much space you allocate. So you do probably want a fairly 
sizable repository area, like you know, a, a, a nice, healthy drive size where you're going to store these. So they don't have to live on C. They can live on another alternate drive, pr preferably one that's not removable. Okay, so we got that. Um, and then, um, let's see, what do we call this? 220. All right. See here, it asks for the allocation of the drive space. And it also asks you whether you want to store it as just one big giant monolithic file or whether you want to split it up. I like to split mine up. I just think it's, it's, it's I've heard that it's a little more dynamic that way. And the, the amount of space to allocate is tricky. So if you allocate 20 gig, it doesn't immediately take up 20 gig, but it will expand up to that point. The problem is if you don't allocate enough is that later you have to come back and add a new drive or resize it's a pain. So it's a good idea to try to allocate as much as you think you might need initially. For what I'm doing here, that's probably okay. The 20 gig, because I'm not going to store any data here. I'm just going to use this for some, some uh, web-based experiments. All right, looks like we're all ready to go. You can go in and fiddle with the hardware. I'm not going to do that right now. I'm going to click finish. Wonderful. So this is common. Okay. So what this is telling me is that what I need to do is I need to reboot the machine. I need to go into BIOS and I need to enable this Intel uh, VTX technology to support uh, virtual machines. So I'll click OK and I'm going to leave this, reboot the machine and go into uh, the BIOS. All right. So I rebooted and um, I fixed the virtual technology settings in my BIOS. So let me see if I can resume that or if I have to start over. I put the drive, uh, the disk back in the drive. So let's see if it'll, if it'll go this time. This prompt about the VMware tools, you will eventually need that. I just don't want to do that in the middle of my uh, installation. So I'm going to tell that to remind me later. But if you ever see that thing about VMware tools, what it's asking to do is once the operating system is installed, and this doesn't matter whether it's Linux or Windows or or whatever, it's a set of software aids that go in the operating system that help. And when I say operating system, I mean the guest operating system, the, the virtualized operating system, not your operating system. They go in there to help the, the virtualized environment function better as a virtualized OS as opposed to one that's running directly on the bare metal. Okay, this little process here is going to take a while, so I'm going to stop the recording and come back when we see something that's a little more uh, more exciting. Okay, so we're back on track. It's installing Ubuntu, and there's really not much to tell here. All operating system installations are different, but all kind of the same. So get this all finished up, and then maybe what I'll do is go back and just relaunch it for you, just so you can kind of see what that... OS running as a guest, they call that the guest operating system, looks like when it's sitting on top of a desktop. All right, so the installation finished up just fine. Wasn't much to see there. Let me show you what this looks like now from start to finish. If I launch the VMware software, so this is the software that manages these, these guest instances, you can have more than one. So I've got the Ubuntu, but I could also have a Windows 10, Windows... 2000, Windows 98, whatever you want, really, any operating system. You can even run more than one at a time, but I'm going to start this one up. And it's just like turning on a physical machine, except it's only running as a software package. And what's really cool about this is it gives you a great little um, lab environment. Uh, the other thing you can do is you can do snapshots so that if somehow you damage the environment or alter it and you want to roll back to a snapshot, you can do that. Uh, something else to be aware of is if you go to your command prompt, you will see now that you have additional uh, network drivers. So if you do like an IP config slash all, IP config slash all, you will see now that you have these VM net adapters. So there's one. Um, there's also, oops, where'd it go? Uh, so you have your, your regular physical adapters, but you also have now these, these VMware net adapters. You'll see them. And so those are the network adapters that the virtual machine is using to communicate with your network. And it can do it one of two ways. It can either be a bridged 
network connection, meaning that it's going to get its own IP address and be an independent uh, IP host on, on your network, or it can do a, um, I can't remember what the word for it is, but it, it where it, it kind of like gnats behind your existing physical computer's IP address. Um, I recommend the first one, Bridged, and you'll see that in the settings where you can adjust that. But anyway, that's how that works. So um, if you're if you're into that or want to be into that, then go ahead and get started, and uh, hope that helps you with the uh, VMware adventure.